This presentation discusses some of the common questions that arise when migrating virtual machines that utilize raw device mappings. This presentation is based on Knowledge Base Article 100 Migrating of virtual machines with RDMs can be performed in three ways. A warm migration using vMotion where the virtual machine state is powered on. Cold migration where the virtual machine state is powered off. Storage migration with storage vMotion and the virtual machine state powered on. In a warm migration, the virtual machine's files are not relocated when the vMotion occurs. The virtual machine is registered to another host, and any RDMs remain as RDMs when the virtual machine is registered to the other host. That is that no changes to the virtual machine itself are made. With cold migration, any non-RDM virtual disks and the virtual machine configuration files are physically moved to the new destination. Raw LUNs themselves cannot be moved, as they are raw disks presented from the SAN. However, the pointer files, RDMs, can be relocated as required. When performing a cold migration of a virtual machine that has RDMs attached to it, the contents of the raw LUN mapped by the RDM are copied into a new VMDK file at the destination, effectively converting or cloning a raw LUN into a virtual disk. This also applies when the virtual machine is not moving between ESX hosts. In this process, your original raw LUN is left intact. However, the virtual machine no longer reads or writes to it. Instead, the newly created virtual disk is used. If you wish to cold migrate a virtual machine without cloning or converting its RDMs, remove them from the configuration of the virtual machine before migrating. You can delete the RDM from the disk when removing it. The raw LUN contents are not changed. Re-add them to the configuration when migration is completed. For ESXi 5.0, during the migration you can use the advanced section of the migration wizard and select if you would like to maintain the same format of the files at the destination or convert it to a thick or thin disk. When you perform a storage vMotion migration, the virtual machine files are physically relocated to a destination's data store or data stores. The same host retains ownership or registration of the virtual machine after storage vMotion completes. For Virtual Infrastructure 3.5, virtual disks and virtual and physical mode RDM pointer files can be relocated to the destination data store, but cannot be converted to thick provisioned or thin provisioned disks during migration. The RDM pointer files of the virtual machine remain as RDM pointer files when the process completes. For vSphere 4.0 and higher, the virtual disks and virtual mode RDM pointer files can be relocated to the destination data store. Virtual disks can be converted to thick provisioned or thin provisioned disks during migration as long as the destination is not an NFS data store. Physical mode RDM pointer files can be relocated to the destination data store, but physical mode RDM data cannot be migrated. Virtual mode RDM data can be migrated with storage vMotion, provided sufficient licensing is present. As a possible issue, in ESX 5.0, during the storage vMotion, virtual mode RDMs can be converted to thick or thin provision disks by selecting the appropriate options under the advanced section of the migration wizard. Physical mode RDMs can only be converted with a cold migration. For more information, see the Migrating RDMs and a Question for RDM Users blog post. If you are attempting the storage vMotion of a virtual mode RDM using the advanced method and the RDM pointer mapping file is already present in the target data store, the storage vMotion finishes quickly, but without moving the data. This is because the storage vMotion detects the source and target data stores for mapping file are the same and therefore concludes that no movement is needed. A workaround for this issue. Remove the RDM from the virtual machine and delete it from disk to ensure the mapping file is deleted. This will not delete the data from the RDM. 
Re-add the RDM and put the mapping file in a different data store than the ultimate target of the storage vMotion. After the virtual machine reconfiguration is complete, attempt the storage vMotion again. Note, to avoid downtime, you can migrate the virtual mode RDM pointer file to an alternate data store that is any other data store than the actual destination data store, then storage vMotion the same pointer file back using either thick zeroed or thick eager zeroed disk format. Using the du-ah command, you can confirm that the pointer exists in the directory on the alternate data store. For more information on the various steps involved during the migration, see the Knowledge Base article, Migrating Virtual Machines. For instructions on using Storage vMotion, see the Knowledge Base article, Moving Virtual Machines with Storage vMotion. The following table summarizes the available options and requirements when using Storage vMotion. If you want to clone a virtual machine without its RDMs, remove them from the configuration of the virtual machine before migrating. You can delete the RDM from the disk when removing it. The raw LUN contents are not changed, only the RDM mapping file is deleted. Re-add them to the configuration when completed. Ensure that snapshots are committed before performing storage migrations especially if you are removing mappings or disks from your virtual machine configuration and later re-adding them. During re-addition of the respective disk, the VMware infrastructure or vSphere client does not allow you to reselect a specific snapshot level or .vmdk file to add back to the virtual machine configuration. Raw device mappings occasionally represent large raw LUNs. If you clone a virtual machine with an RDM still attached, the contents of the raw LUN mapped by the RDM are copied into a new virtual disk file at the destination. Converting an RDM into a virtual disk file does not succeed if your destination or target data store does not have the capability of storing single contiguous files as large as a raw LUN. Large virtual disks have the same requirements or restraints as per the recommended practice and supportability guidelines. For example, if your destination data store is a VMFS3 created with a 2 MB block size and the RDM or virtual disk being converted or migrated is 640 GB, the process fails. A VMFS3 block size of 4 MB or higher is necessary to store files larger than 512 GB. For more information, see block size limitations on a VMFS data store. For more information, see the article this presentation is based on. Thank you for choosing VMware. By clicking on the annotations below, you can follow the Support Insider blog for updates and alerts from the VMware support team, view more videos on VMware and VMware products at the KBTV channel on YouTube, or follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates, alerts, and VMware support.